Sometimes bath time just doesn't get rid of your dog's bad odor. And there might be a medical reason as to why your pup stinks. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Alpha Paw, your destination for everything dog. I'm Bernie Zilio, and I'm on a mission to answer every doggone question you have ever had about your fur babies. And today we're talking about even more reasons your precious canine could be stinking up your house. Thankfully, we have an expert with us today, Dr. Ross Bernstein. Dr. Ross is a seasoned veterinary professional and pet care expert. He earned his doctorate degree in veterinary medicine at UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, and his work has been featured in several industry-leading publications, including the Journal of Veterinary Surgery. He is our go-to vet for everything we want and need to know about our fur babies. So welcome back to Alpha Paw, Dr. Ross. Hey, Bernie. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Thank you for being here. <laughs> Good. Um, okay. So in part one of this Why Does My Dog Smell series, we discussed... <laughs> some like innocuous treatable reasons that your dog could possibly be smelling after a bath and grooming and all that, which were kind of like infections, but nothing super, super serious. However, there are some other reasons that are a little more concerning um, if your dog is smelling. And so the first one I want to discuss with you today, Dr. Ross, is actually dental disease. Um, can you kind of explain what that kind of smells like, what we should be worried about, all of that? Yeah. Um Dental disease in dogs, it's pretty much the same as in people that if we're not brushing their teeth every day or at least every other day, they're going to start to build, build up plaque and tartar, which is basically a, a film of bacteria and food particles on their teeth and gums that can start smelling really bad. The medical word for that is halitosis or they have a bad breath, and that can also lead to severe dental disease and gingivitis or inflammation of the gums. And they can even get infections in their teeth, like tooth root abscesses, fractured teeth, loose teeth, infections in the mouth. And so if they have a very foul-smelling breath or <laughs> bad breath, then you um, should get them checked out by your veterinarian just to make sure that, uh, that, that your pup is not in pain and um, cause, cause infections in your mouth and sore teeth or, uh, bad teeth can, can be sore sometimes. Yeah. And I know that we've talked before it, in great length about how important dental health is for our dogs. And I know for me personally, every time I take my dog to the vet, there's posters everywhere about the importance of dental health and how it can affect the health of the rest of the body and all of that stuff. So it is incredibly important. Um, and I know that the breath of your dog and in humans as well, can tell you a lot about their health overall. And one of the things that I read about, which blew my mind, was that if your dog's breath smells sweet, that means that something's up, which I had no clue about. So I'm not, I know, so I'm not the perfect veterinarian to be talking about the smell of the breath. Like my smell is not the greatest. But yes, if you're if your dog has diabetes and in some situations, diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a complication of diabetes, then yeah, certainly sometimes you can smell it. You can also smell it in the urine sometimes. So if they have a, in diabetes, it's when they can't regulate their blood glucose and their glucose can be very high. And so you could smell that potentially, but what you're actually probably smelling is because it's because your glucose is so high in the blood, it's not getting into your cells where it's needed. So your cells start using a different chemical or a different compound for energy called ketones. And then you break those down and you can actually smell the ketones, which are very sweet. And or, I mean, if your dog is ketotic, which is the word for it, they're usually pretty sick. And yeah, maybe, maybe you can smell that, but you might notice some other signs first, like if they're drinking a lot of water, peeing a lot, lethargic, not eating. And their, their urine might have a pretty sweet smell too. That one I can smell, but uh, not, not always on their breath. Although, <laughs> although certainly some people can definitely smell it. I just, I don't know if I'm one of them. 
All right. Um, so moving on to something else that could actually be cause for concern. Um, and it's kind of specific to specific breeds or dogs of specific sizes, just any type of dog that has a lot of rolls and folds. We love those dogs, but there are some things we have to look out for with them. Now this is called skinfold pyoderma. Um, Dr. Ross, can you break this down? I, my dog clearly does not have that type of skin, so I wouldn't know, but I know a lot of our viewers do. So what exactly is skinfold pyoderma? Skinfold pyoderma, and really you're, you're talking about it in dogs with a lot of folds, but theoretically it can happen in any dog. And it can, oh. it all, it also happens in overweight dogs where they're overweight and their skin has folds because of that. But it's, it's a similar, similar idea that we were talking about in the other episode with, with the ear yeast infection and the yeast infection between the toes. But basically what happens is when the skin folds over and it's super common in those smushed face breeds or mm -hmm. brachycephalic breeds like bulldogs, Frenchies, pugs, shih tzus, those ones where their face is squashed in. They're just it chunky. Can in, <laughs> it can happen in other places of the body too, like around their tail in between their, their paws. Uh, but it's when they trap in moisture and it's warm and they're not cleaned regularly. And then also sometimes their hair growing in there can, can complicate it too, but it makes a micro environment where it's more likely for yeast and bacteria to start to colonize and make itself home in there. So especially in those breeds, you want to wipe in between those folds and prevent the skin fold pyoderma, which is basically an, an infection uh, in between the folds. It can also be called fold dermatitis. I mean, call, call it what you want, but uh, you want to be cleaning in between those folds and around the tail because in bulldogs, they get those corkscrew tails and that can be nasty too. I assume these are the types of things that should be taken seriously and should be um, evaluated by a veterinarian, right? Yeah, uh, it's, you can certainly do it at home too. Uh, I would clean with like baby wipes. You can clean, get, just like put one on your finger and wipe in between those folds. They often start to become red and inflamed and also foul smelling. So if you want to be cleaning them at home, now if they start to develop a worse infection, you can talk to your vet about some prescription wipes that have antibacterial, antifungal, or antimicrobial properties in them too. But uh, it's certainly something that you can start to take care of on your own first. Okay, great. So what I learned today is that maintenance is super, super important. Like make sure your dog is clean. Make sure if you have one of those breeds that has a lot of folds in the skin that you're cleaning those. Dental health, super important. Um, just take care of your dog. <laughs> and if you notice something, a weird smell, bathe them. And if the smell is still there, take them to the vet. It's, it's not that difficult. Um, but I actually have more reasons why your dog could be smelling on my list here, but unfortunately we don't have any more time. So if you guys, our viewers would like to see a part three, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Again, I'm Bernie Zilio, and this is Alpha Paw. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single doggone episode and we'll see you guys next time.